Hello everybody and welcome to the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. I am your host Rusty Peace and we've got so much to talk about this week. It's unbelievable. In all my years of the uh, Rail Splitter Athletics Report, I do not recall having as much to talk about as we have tonight. Uh, folks, it's homecoming week here on the LMU campus and with that we've got some sporting events that have taken place prior to the homecoming and this weekend upcoming as well as the uh, the week following, so uh, a lot to talk about in that regard. We'll talk about volleyball, soccer, golf, tennis, basketball, and much, much more on tonight's show. It's going to be a dandy. Folks, to keep up to date on all that's going on with Lincoln Memorial University Athletics, pull up the LMU Athletics website, www.lmurailsplitters.com. You'll find everything you want to know about Lincoln Memorial University Athletics, from the last goal scored to the uh, last point scored and the last run scored. It's all right there on the LMU Athletics website. We got a great show in store for you. Stay with us right here on the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. If you love your car or truck, let us help you keep it clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's has unlimited wash plans to fit every budget. Try our $5 express wash or one of our three monthly wash plans. The Wheel Deal, the Soapy J, or the new Blast Wax. With our monthly wash plans, if you pay with credit card, all you do is pay for the present month and your card will be billed on the first of each month. Don't forget, Soapy J's has free vacuums with any wash. Soapy J's Express Car Wash, open seven days a week. Let us help keep your car or truck clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, Middlesboro. The J. Frank White Academy is more than a high school. Your child will have room to grow in mind, body, and spirit. Small, safe learning environments, individualized learning plans, and cutting-edge technology. Every child deserves a quality education in a safe, nurturing environment. Our college prep program teaches a love of learning, self-discipline, and service to others. The Academy is fully accredited by Advanced Ed. You have a choice at the J. Frank White Academy. Since 1973, DeRoyal has been a leader and an innovator in manufacturing products for the healthcare industry. DeRoyal supplies more than 20,000 products and product lines such as acute care, orthopedics, wound care, and trauma. DeRoyal is proud to be the largest supplier of orthopedic soft goods to clinics and hospitals in the nation. Since its start in Tazewell, Tennessee, DeRoyal has grown to open factories in over 29 locations worldwide and employs over 2,000 people. DeRoyal, a name you can trust and an employer you can count on. Looking for efficient, compassionate, and comprehensive health care for you and your family? Visit University Medical Clinic. All providers are faculty members of LMU's DeBus College of Osteopathic Medicine and are board certified in their specialty. Multiple specialties available including family medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, and osteopathic manipulative medicine with locations in Harrogate, Taswell, and New Taswell, and most insurance plans accepted. University Medical Clinic is here to serve you. Call 423-869-7193 for an appointment. University Medical Clinic. Welcome back to the show. Friday evening, Jenny Michael and the Lady Rail Splitter Volleyball team returned to the Mary E. Mars Gymnasium floor when they played host to the Royals of Queens University for the first time in South Atlantic Conference play. The match marked the fourth time the two teams have met in collegiate volleyball historically and the first time that Queens and LMU have met on the Lady Rail Splitter's home floor. At the beginning of the match, it appeared the Royals were destined to play the role of the spoiler when they came away with a 25-19 win in the opening set. LMU managed to bounce back in the second set by taking a tight 25-19 win of their own to even the match at a set apiece and then battled back to take sets two and three by the narrowest of margins, 31-29 and 25-22 for the 3-1 win. After the match, Jenny Michael talked about the team's effort. Um, you know, we had to learn. We had to grow up really quick tonight. Um, and if we weren't going to do that, if we were not going to be able to grow up, then we were going to get the loss for sure. I mean, Queens was ready. Queens had no problem coming into our gym and taking advantage of any lineup differences or any age differences in our different positions. I mean, they were ready to win. They wanted it. And they played very, very hard. I mean, that third set, that third set was anybody's at the end. You know, I thought that our girls did a nice job overcoming a deficit. I'm not sure why we like to dig holes. <laughs> we um, commented on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. Well, I'm ready to remove the shovels that they have, and so no more digging holes. Absolutely not. Less than 24 hours later, the LMU women returned to the Mars Gym to play host to the Indians of Catawba College. Catawba lost a grueling five-set match with Carson Newman Friday evening in Jefferson City, Tennessee, and thus Ginger Hamrick and her squad were ready to salvage a victory out of the two-match road swing. From the very beginning, the Indians came out of, on the opening two sets of the match and put the tomahawk to the Lady Rail Splitters, winning 25-20 and 25-22 to take a commanding two sets to none lead at the intermission. 
Following the break and words from Jenny Michael in the locker room, the LMU women caught fire behind the play of sophomore Jazzy Oates and ran the table over the next three sets to come away with a 3-2 win with 25-19, 25-18, and 20, uh, I beg your pardon, 15-13 victories. So, to be very honest, um, overall, I don't think that we, in general, we necessarily deserve to win tonight. Um, I thought Catawba played hard. They played with a lot of heart, especially early on. But I got to give our girls credit in that we indeed fought. We fought, and I mentioned it before, um, and it's just such a joy to be with them because they believe in each other. They believe and they give positive energy to one another. They feed off of it. Um, and, you know, this weekend we've had some individual performances that have kind of helped carry us, you know, Miss Walton last night and Miss Oates this afternoon. But all of that, they understand, is made possible by team effort. You know, a relentless pursuit on defense. Uh, Abby's been doing a nice job being in a tough spot, being solo this weekend. She's doing her best to try to distribute the ball. And we've, uh, we've gotten lucky, to be honest. But we'll take it. It doesn't have to be pretty all the time. We'll take a W anyway. On Tuesday, the Lady Rail Splitters played their third consecutive home match when they hosted the Eagles of Carson Newman University. LMU entered their first meeting of the year with the Eagles carrying a 10-6 overall record while standing in second place in the league race with a 6-2 conference mark. Carson Newman was still reeling from Saturday's loss to Queens University and struggling to stay afloat in the South Atlantic Conference with a 3-5 league record while remaining uh, with a, above the 500 mark at 8-7 on the year. To make matters worse, the Eagles head coach Shannon Mincy was unable to attend the team's match uh, with the Lady Rail Splitters due to having to serve a one-game suspension for being issued a red card in Saturday's loss to Queens University. Mincy's absence may or may not have uh, helped the Lady Rail Splitters, but uh, LMU rolled up a 3-0 win over Carson Newman by winning 25-22, 25-20, and 25-19 to remain undefeated at home this year. After the match, head coach Jenny Michael was very pleased with her team's play. Uh, very much so, actually. Um, it's very interesting because we, uh, you know, had a little walk through earlier in the day and just some of the things that we had talked about and, and the girls were ready. You could tell they were focused. There was a looseness in the gym, but there was still a focus and an intensity and they knew what they wanted to do. And that's something that, you know, I feel like we've talked about and I've been able to say about this team is when they themselves talk about something, when they determine and make their mind up for something, they accomplish it. Coach and was, it was, no, 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 it's cool. It was, it was awesome just because we could feel it. You know, like Lydia and I were kind of looking at it ourselves like before the game and we're like, we feel a little different right now. We're not sure what it was. <laughs> it was just this, this, I don't want to say calm in a bad way, but it was just a, a poise that we had about we knew what we wanted to do. We wanted to come in and do business, and they were able to perform and execute tonight. It was nice. This weekend, the Lady Rail Splitters are on the road when they travel to Brevard College Friday evening and then move over to Hickory, North Carolina on Saturday to take on the Bears of Lenore Ryan University. Friday evening's match is set for a 7 p.m. first serve while Saturday's action gets underway at 2 o'clock. And moving to cross country on Saturday, Jeremy Donahue and his teams traveled to Louisville, Kentucky to participate in the Greater Louisville Invitational hosted by the Louisville Sports Commission and held at E.P. Tom Sawyer State Park. The rail splitters completed the 8K event with a 10th place finish, but the Lady Rail Splitters were unable to post a team score in their 5K outing due to a freak power outings during the race that caused, was caused by a heavy downpour. The occurrence, while unfortunate, cost the LMU women a solid finish at the race. And on Monday morning, we talked with Donahue about the event. Yeah, that's the first time I've ever seen that or experienced that in a race as an athlete or a coach. It was uh, very wet conditions there, storming during the, the women's race. And I guess right before the, the first runner across the finish line came across, they had the technical difficulties there. And, you know, that, that is unfortunate. It was nobody's fault, nothing we could do about it. Uh, it's, it's, of course, frustrating when you put in an effort like that and really look forward to this big meet that you come away with no results on paper. But like I told the women, uh, you know the effort you gave in the race and, and that doesn't go anywhere. They know in their hearts the type of race they had if they really executed the way they needed, needed to. And as coaches, we know what we got out of that race. And uh, we've seen a, a few steps forward by some of our ladies, but at, at the same time, uh, going off no times, just how they raced, that there was still lacking some uh, improvement in a few of our ladies. So we'll look to, to get a good race coming up this weekend out of them. 
The men were led by sophomore preseason all-sack selection Ryan Mecca, who garnered a seventh-place finish with a time of 26-28-51, while senior Bradley Maldonado, juniors Brandon Ward, Stephen Thompson, and Leonardo Germaniani also ran well at the race. Raining during that race, very sloppy conditions, not running quite as fast as Louisville normally does. Yeah, uh, but we did have some strong performances this week weekend. Uh, Ryan Mecca ran a great race this uh, this past weekend, running near the front of the pack the whole race, uh, got in the top 10 in a big event like that. So real solid. Bradley Maldonado took a big step forward this race, doing his usual thing of moving up throughout the race and got in the top 25. And then uh, you know, guys after that maybe underperformed a little bit, but um, you know I think we those are things we could still work on, things that they uh, didn't get out quite as aggressive as they needed to in that big race. Uh, but they realized that, said that right after the race, and so they'll move on from it, learn from it, and uh, take it into this next weekend. This weekend, the LMU cross-country teams head down to Swanee, Tennessee, and the University of the South to run in a dual match at the Tiger Twilight Invitational. The race will be both teams' final outing before the October 26, 2013 Food Line South Atlantic Conference Championships on Black Mountain in Montreat, North Carolina. Moving over to tennis, another pair of LMU athletic teams that were in action last weekend were the Lincoln Memorial University men's and women's tennis teams. On Saturday, both teams traveled over to Williamsburg, Kentucky to participate in the University of the Cumberland's Fall Invitational. The LMU men won seven of the nine matches in which they played, while the Lady Rail Splitters also defeated the Patriots. And earlier this week, we visited with head coach Benny Collins and talked with him about his team's efforts. So we, we went to the tournament two starters short and still won, winning four out of the possible five point, uh, nine points. And that was pretty big for us. You know, uh, you know, Alina steps in and beats Nisha. Nisha is one of the top players in, in uh, the in, in AI. She won the uh, regional, ITA regional recently, going on to the nationals. And uh, she's always give us a tough time. Uh, the rest of the girls played good, you know. Uh, our, our new player stepped in, Priscilla uh, played big. She, she won her bracket at number two. Lana won her bracket at number three. And then Alina and Priscilla playing number one doubles won that bracket, you know. So that was pretty tough. There were some pretty decent teams there. Give us some good competition. But I was pleased overall with our play from the girls' side. You know, Will Sparks played the number one position, played the Malaysian kid from uh, University of Cummins for the final in the, bra in the uh, number one bracket. And, uh, Goes to a third set tiebreaker. Uh, Will gets pulls a hamstring a little bit in that second set, and uh, go, when he goes into that tiebreaker, it you know he was gimped up a little bit and hurt him. But now, take this in the court. Last year, the Malaysian kid beats the great Philip Hoffman. So Will Sparks has raised his level of play to a new level. He physically trains so hard on and off the court in the weight room on all the running drills. I mean, he has pushed himself, and it's really really made him a, a, a strong player now. So he stepped in and, and done some big things. I'm, I'm pleased. The rest of the guys did good. Alexi was the only other guy that lost uh, at the number four position. He went to a third set tiebreaker and uh, fought hard. It was really good. So, and uh, we won all three doubles brackets, which I'm a big guru on the doubles. You know, you win the doubles, you can then win the match easy. So that was big stuff for us. The rail splitters are now officially done for the fall season, while the Lady Rail Splitters still have the this Friday's East Tennessee State University Tournament. The event will feature ETSU, Lincoln Memorial, and King University in a tri-match and will be the Lady Rail Splitters' final match of the fall schedule. We've got a lot more to talk about. We're going to take a brief time out. When we come back, we'll turn to women's soccer. That's here on the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. Stay with us. Off at MyCokeRewards.com. No matter whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, Subway of Harrogate and Middlesbrough has your fresh interest at heart. On your way to work, try one of our mouth-watering breakfast sandwich or flatbread omelets. If it's lunch or dinner time, choose from our wide selection of classic, select, or premium sandwiches, all made to your order. If you're serving a crowd, Subway has sandwich platters, giant subs, box lunches, and even cookie platters. Whether it's dine-in or carry-out, you can eat healthy and eat fresh at Subway. Subway, 362 Catawba Avenue in Harrogate, and on the corner of the Village Square Mall, Middlesbrough. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old 
Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite, because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. I will help families adopt children from around the world and in our own backyard. I am teaching ethics to the next generation of lawyers. I will make a difference for the underserved of this region. I will be an advocate for my clients. As a prosecutor, I fought for those who couldn't speak for themselves. I'm a lawyer and professor. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. Welcome back to the show. Last Saturday, the Lady Rail Splitter soccer team traveled over to Brevard, North Carolina and got back on winning track in the South Atlantic Conference play with a 3-0 win over the Tornadoes of Brevard College. LMU got a pair of goals from freshman forward Michelle Hunter and one from junior midfield forward Nicole McKinney on the way to their fourth sack win of the year and their sixth overall. On Monday, the Rail Splitter Athletics Report talked with head coach Helly O'Dana about that win. Yeah, I mean, uh, Michelle Hunter, she does create enough to score more goals. It's just maturity, and she's young, and uh, these are going to come with time. But uh, she really played the same way that she's been playing the whole year. Um, she's special. She, she's going to cause a lot of problems for teams to defend her. Nicole, we all know, but uh, really, it, the, the, this year's team is not about one or two or three players. It's about the, the group. And once again, we went deep on the bench. Once again, we, we uh, chipped away, like I've been saying the whole year long, and we, um, we took care of some critical players that they had, you know, credit a lot to T. Doyle that marked uh, their best player, shut her down, and, um, but our possession was good, finishing. Finishing um, was, was good in the second half. In the first half, we could have put him away early, you know, but um, a win is a win on the road, special is great. On Wednesday, the Lady Rail Splitters returned to the LMU soccer complex to host in-state arch rival Carson Newman University in league play. The Eagles entered this week's match at 1-2-1 and one in conference action while holding a 2-4-2 and two overall record. LMU fell behind 1-0 less than five minutes into the match when a long ball struck by the Eagles' Liz Munguia from near midfield came off keeper Kayla Stevens' fists after an effort to punch the shot away and slipped past her into the goal. The Lady Splitters were able to tie the match just before the half in the 39th minute when freshman Michelle Hunter scored her sixth goal of the season with help from teammate Marissa Kiernan. LMU took the lead in the 76th minute when midfielder Maddie Nagy also scored on a long kick that was misplayed by the keeper to give the Lady Rail Splitters a 2-1 advantage. Carson Newman again tied things up in the 79th minute when Liz Munguia scored her second goal on a header off of a corner kick. Both teams then played through the remainder of regulation to a 2-2 tie. But in the 98th minute, however, Gabriella Janicelli shocked the Lady Rail Splitters when she caught a rebounded shot and arched it past the keeper to give the Eagles the 3-2 overtime win. The loss was the first at home this year for the Lady Rail Splitters and drops LMU to 6-3-1 overall and 4-2 in league play. This weekend, the LMU women will play host to the Royals of Queens University as part of the 2013 homecoming festivities at Lincoln Memorial University. Saturday's conference action gets underway at 1 p.m. at the LMU Soccer Complex and will be a twin bill with the rail splitters who get underway against Queens at 3.30. And moving over to men's soccer, last Saturday the rail splitters also traveled to North Carolina and took on the Tornadoes of Brevard. Entering the match on a two-game losing skid the South Atlantic, in South Atlantic Conference play, having lost to both Mars Hill and most recently Lenore Rhine. As expected, Saturday's meeting with Juan Mascaro's Tornadoes proved to be as tough as head coach Helly O'Dana anticipated. LMU and BC battled through a 0-0 tie until the 86th minute when Rail Splitter sophomore defender Nathaniel Johnson took possession of a loose ball in the box and beat the keeper in a 1v1 situation to give Lincoln Memorial the goal and the eventual 1-0 win. Earlier this week, we caught up with head coach Helly O'Dana and talked to him about Saturday's victory over Brevard. Yeah, Brevard is, is a difficult team to play there. They, they, they understand their field, and the field plays so much more um, of an importance on the men's than it does on the women's, you know, because you already have a small field, and, and possibly the smallest one in the conference. 
very bumpy, very uh, hard on that day, which normally is very sloppy because it rains so much there, but on, you know, on a very unusual day, it was very dry. Um, they're very big and athletic, you know, which these things show a lot more on the men's game than it does on the women's game. So they collected wins against Brevar, Erskine, and, and um, the, the, I scratched the game against Queens because it was a pouring rain day, day there. But um, they're a tough team to play in those situations. So they were well prepared. We um, really may not have created much, but we were solid all around, all around under the conditions. And when the chains came, we cashed it. So that's that's uh, what a, a good teams do in tough days. You know, they just doesn't matter who scored, you know, and it was going to be a day like that because everything was about doubling, tripling Mario. Everything was about hitting hard and hard our midfielders, you know, a lot of yellow cards. So I knew it was going to come on a, on a either free kick or corner kick, and that's exactly what happened. Wednesday, the Lincoln Memorial men played host to uh, the team we as rail splitter fans all love to hate, the Eagles of Carson Newman University, when they came to town for that South Atlantic Conference matchup. Entering Wednesday's match, the Eagles were 2-2 two two in league play and 5-3 and three overall, while the rail splitters were 2-2-1 two two in South Atlantic Conference action and 4-4-1 four four and one on the year. From the opening touch, Wednesday's match was a physical one, with LMU and Carson Newman both being issued a number of fouls and cards early in the match. Um, LMU, or actually Carson Newman got on the scoreboard first in the 25th minute when Nico Knoll scored with help from teammate Jake Fielder. Less than 45 seconds into the second half, Carson Newman took a 2-0 lead when Ross Frame took Duncan Foster, uh, Foster's pass and scored from long range. With more than 44 minutes remaining in the match, LMU's fate looked sealed in the 59th minute when sophomore Pedro Villa shot from the right side and placed the ball into the back corner to cut the LMU deficit to 1-0. Uh, 20 minutes later, in the 79th minute, LMU got the equalizer when senior uh, Mario Petto scored off of teammate George Burns header following a Gus Rivera throw in. With the match now 2-2, LMU stayed on the attack, pressuring the Eagle defense with shot after shot until the 82nd minute when Pento tallied his second goal off of a deflected shot by the keeper to give LMU its final 3-2 margin of victory. Now 5-4-1 overall and 3-2-1 in the sack. This Saturday, the LMU men play host to undefeated conference opponent Queens University. The Royals bring a perfect conference mark of 6-0 into the LMU soccer complex while boasting an overall record of 9-1. The event will get underway at 3-30 on the LMU campus and is free to the public. Monday and Tuesday, the Lincoln Memorial University men's and women's golf teams travel to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina for the annual Myrtle Beach Intercollegiate. This year's tournament was being co-hosted by LMU and South Atlantic Conference member Lenore Ryan University at the Sea Trail Golf Resort. The LMU women's golf team capped the tournament with a ninth place finish by turning in rounds of 322 and 337 for a two-day team score of 659. That's 83 strokes over par for the event. Uh, the finish allowed the LMU women to complete the event in a tie with Pfeiffer University. St. Leo took the championship with rounds of 290 and 319 for a final score of 609. The Lady Rail Splitters now have only their October 14th and 15th Patsy Rendleman Invitational, hosted by Catawba College in Salisbury, North Carolina, remaining on the 2013 schedule. Paced by junior Braden Gallion, the Lincoln Memorial University men's golf team cut five strokes off Monday's opening round to shoot a 287 in Tuesday's final day of competition at the Myrtle Beach Intercollegiate to take third place at the event. Lincoln Memorial followed up Monday's 292 with a round of 287 on Tuesday to finish the event with a team score of 579. That's three strokes over par for the tournament. By virtue of their five-shot improvement, LMU jumped from sixth place to third in the final standings, while SAC opponent Wingate University captured the tournament title with rounds of 285 and 289 for a 574. The rail splitters are now set to host their only home tournament on the fall schedule. Monday and Tuesday, the LMU men will host the State Farm Invitational at Woodlake Golf Course in Tazewell, Tennessee. And Monday morning, Josh Schertz and the Rail Splitter men's basketball team learned that they've been ranked number 13 in this year's Division II Bulletin NCAA Division II men's basketball preseason poll. Since Schertz took over the helm of the LMU program more than five years ago, the Rail Splitters have been nationally ranked for 42 consecutive weeks, which has become a new South Atlantic Conference record for one of its member institutions. On Tuesday morning, Schertz gave us his thoughts on the team's most recent ranking. Um, you know, I told our guys, obviously, the people that rank for Division II Bullets have not seen us practice yet, so they would not be, not be ranked as 13th in the country, but we do appreciate the, uh, 
Um, the recognition, I think, you know, what Division Two Bulletin does for for D two is is fantastic, um, and uh, it, it's always nice to be recognized. We realize that it's based on uh, projections, and in, probably in our case, more based on um, you know what we've done over a four year window. Probably not what uh, um, you know anything to do with this year's team. We got some good players back, but a lot of guys that uh, you know haven't had a chance to to do it yet. And um, certainly, you look at our league, and I think there could be a lot more teams. Carson Newman's going to be fantastic uh, with two All Americans, and Ish Sanders and Antoine Davis. Anderson was in the poll in terms of, uh, I think, receiving votes just outside the top 25. And uh, on paper, maybe, uh, you know, Queens might have the, the, the best, you know, on talent paper in the league. Last season, the Rail Splitters finished the year as uh, South Atlantic Conference regular season champions while earning a trip to the SAC tournament finals and their third consecutive trip to the NCAA Southeast Region Tournament. The team ended the year with a 25 and 6 overall record, including a 15 and 3 conference mark. Following the graduation of five seniors from last year's squad, Schertz and his team will be looking to build off of last year's finish while replacing the gaps of those seniors leaving. And that's when they begin official team practice October 15th. The Rail Splitters open the 2013-14 schedule November 9th at home when they play host to former LMU head coach Hugh Watson and his Tigers of Hawassi College. We're going to take another time out. When we come back, we've got something to tell you about this weekend's Hall of Fame induction ceremony here on the LMU campus. Stay with us. Nestled at the foot of the Cumberland Gap, Lincoln Memorial University honors the vision and spirit of Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln's values are perfectly in sync with the modern educational experience at LMU. Our students find personal attention is a way of life and a way to success. If Lincoln Memorial University fits your vision of college, visit our website at lmunet.edu for more information. I'll save a life. People's lives are in your hands. I can't have a bad day. I have saved a life. I will be a nurse. I will be a nurse. I deal with life and death situations. We touch a lot of lives every day. People's lives are in your hands. I will be a nurse. I will be a nurse. We represent the Coke brand, and we would love to somehow bring some kind of legal action against Coke Zero. There might be some taste infringement issues. There's really no legal concepts of a company bringing a lawsuit against itself. If this is the king of the jungle, they're acting like the toucan that's right. on the branch, real colorful and preening, right. and showing off, and hey, look at, look at us. I want to take a stick and knock that toucan off the branch. Yeah. Da, 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 da. The J. Frank White Academy is more than a high school. Your child will have room to grow in mind, body, and spirit. Small, safe learning environments, individualized learning plans, and cutting-edge technology. Every child deserves a quality education in a safe, nurturing environment. Our college prep program teaches a love of learning, self-discipline, and service to others. The Academy is fully accredited by Advanced Ed. You have a choice at the J. Frank White Academy. Saturday morning as part of the 2013 Hall of Fame, or I beg your pardon, homecoming festivities here at Lincoln Memorial University, the 2013 LMU Athletes Hall of Fame induction ceremonies will take place at 9.30 a.m. in the uh, Tex Turner Arena. Jack Comperoni, Ellen Husarek, and Chris Sunderhouse will be members of the 2013 class, and uh, they will be the latest class to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, obviously, but we ask that you come out and show your support for those three individuals and recognize them for their contributions here as LMU athletes in years gone by. That's all the time we have for this week's show. Until next week, I'm Rusty Peace. For everybody behind the scenes, good night, everybody.